So Anne and I have been in Australia, well, her five months now, me coming up to three months almost, um, and we really miss eating Filipino food and at one place in particular. What do you miss the most in the Philippines? Sweet spaghetti. <laughs> I really miss Jollibee. Morocco. <laughs> <laughs> So I've done a chicken toy video before, um, but I realized that some things weren't quite right, so I asked you guys for help, and I also read through the comments of the previous video to make sure that I got it right this time. First thing I wanted to know was whether the chicken was brined or part-cooked and then frozen. A quick tweet later, most people confirmed that the chicken was indeed brined first, frozen, and then thawed in store before being fried once. I went through the old YouTube video's comments as well for more insight. Now Jollibee, just like any other fast food chain, will be very secretive with their, well, secret sauce. And I'm pretty sure that there are some tight NDAs surrounding processes and recipes. But I was able to learn three important insights. Before being coated, the chicken is plunged in some ice water. This will help the flour stick and give us a nice crisp exterior. Secondly, the temp of the oil is set to 120 degrees Celsius and that is kept there the whole cook. Third, the brine is very salty, meaning a lot of the moisture and flavor will come from this step. For the brine, all you have to do is bring some water to a boil and then in there we will dissolve some salt, sugar, and stock powder. Now, I wanted to use MSG but couldn't find it in the local supermarkets here, so I opted for stock instead. Stir and dissolve. Let it cool slightly and then mix in some cold water. Drop in all your chicken pieces. I'm using thighs and legs exclusively because I prefer it and make sure that the brine covers everything. This goes into the fridge for at least 24 hours. The next day, we're gonna prep the coating mixture. Half and half flour and cornstarch, some chicken salt or MSG, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and five spice. Mix well until combined. Bring the chicken out, go straight into some cold water and place in the flour mixture. Make sure that it's very well coated and that you go under the skin if possible with that mixture. And then you can shake off the excess. What I like to do is drip some water into the flour as well. This will give us some nice crunchy bumps on the cooked chicken. Bring some oil to temp. I'm using peanut oil at around 120 degrees Celsius and slowly lower the chicken in. The cooking time will really depend on how big your chicken is. In Australia, they are massive. So I found that my pieces cook through anywhere between 15 and 20 minutes. Just make sure you keep an eye on them. Chicken Joy is nothing without the gravy. Am I right or am I right? So take a saucepan out, chuck in some butter and more butter and let it melt. Once bubbling, whisk in some flour until well combined. Add some chicken stock, salt, pepper, milk, and soy sauce. Let thicken to desired consistency on a very, very, very low fire and adjust if needed. Spaghetti time. Grab some ground beef, break it up in a pan with some hot oil. Once slightly colored, add in some sliced red hot dogs. Now, I thought red hot dogs were only from the Philippines, but apparently they are everywhere around the world. Take all of that out of the pan and sweat off some chopped onions. Once slightly colored, add in some tomato sauce and some tomato paste. Cook for five minutes. Toss your meats. <laughs> Toss your meats back in, that's what the script says, and add in your evaporated milk. This is where your memory will kick in. Keep tasting it and adjusting it with things like salt, pepper, and sugar, or sweet ketchup. Taste is so subjective, so just bring it to a point where you are happy with it. I'm not the one eating it, you are. Let that simmer together for about 20 minutes on a low fire. For the pasta, just bring some water to a boil, add in a lot of salt. The water has to be very salty.
I would then personally mix my pasta with the sauce, but the bee doesn't serve it like that. So naked pasta goes onto the plate and that is topped with sauce, some cheddar cheese, quick melt if you have access to it. For the burger steak, pretty straightforward. Season some ground beef with salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. This is one of those things that if you burp two hours after eating it, you should still smell it. Disgusting, I know, but season accordingly. I like to make them thin and press down the middle so that they don't take a bloated shape while cooking and to make sure that they don't shrink too much either. Get some oil hot in a pan and cook the burgers to a desired doneness. For the sauce, let's put a pan out on medium, add in some butter, and once melted, place in your sliced white mushrooms. Cook these down until brown, and then we can add a little bit of milk to it. We will then take our chicken gravy, because it was so good, and place that in. This will be our thickener. Now, if you don't want to use your chicken gravy or didn't make enough, no problem. You can always use just like a cornstarch slurry or something to thicken your mushroom sauce. Slowly cook this down until nice and thick. Season with some salt and pepper if needed. This is served with some cute little rice and then obviously the mushroom sauce goes onto the burgers. Could be a bit sweeter. Oh. But the burger steak, it's actually pretty close if you haven't had yeah. burger steak before. The burger steak is nice. Spaghetti is nice. It's good, but Jollibee is better. This would probably be like a charcoal grilled version of the burger steak. So it's not bad. It's not crispy. What are you talking about? It's super crispy. It doesn't have the same crunch as the chicken joy one. <laughs> Dahlia, quiet on set. Quiet on set, Dahlia. <laughs> okay, so in total, the meal actually really gave me Jolly Bee vibes. So. <laughs> you agree, Dahlia? Dahlia, you agree with that? <laughs> Definitely Jolly Bee vibes. Super yummy. The chicken joy this time was much better than last time. The burger stick apparently was spot on and the spaghetti was tasty, but could have been sweeter. One thing is for sure, the taste and smell of the food we eat can certainly take you back to a particular place or time. What does it taste like? Dolly <laughs> 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 